Hi everyone, welcome you all. This is Pawan from SDT channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to generate LU reports using TestNG in Selenium Automation. So this is going to be uh, two parts and in this part, I'm going to show you how to set up a new project and how to generate a basic LU report in TestNG. Now let's get started. So here, as a first step, uh, we need to create a new Maven project and I'll update form.xml uh, with the required dependency. So we need basically TestNG dependency and uh, Cilium Java because I'm going to write Cilium script and WebDriver Manager is another dependency I need uh, to avoid the driver uh, paths and LEO test engine. So this is a main uh, dependency which we need to work with the LEO reports, right? Now let's uh, do this step and let's go to Eclipse. Now here I'm going to create a new Maven project. Go to File, New, select Other and here I'm selecting Maven project. Click on the Next and here default uh, workspace location, Next. Now again, click on the next and here I'm giving a project name as LU reporting and artifact ID is also LU reporting group ID artifact ID. Then click on the finish. Now it is going to generate a new project LU reporting and inside this project. So by default, you will get some different packages. I don't need this. I'm just removing those packages. I'll create my own packages. Done. So now let's see how to update Ponder XML. As soon as we created Maven a project, then we have to update all required dependencies so that it will automatically download required jar file. So by default, it will give you JN dependency and no need this. I'm going to use testng. So I'm just removing this dependency. Now, what are our dependency we need? Uh, testng, Selim Java, WebDriver Manager, and LEO testng. So let me get all these dependency from Maven repositories. I'll just go to mavenrepository.com. Now from this website, just search for testng. Now we'll get the test engine dependency. So here go to the latest version 7.0.0. Copy this dependency and add it in the form.xml. And similarly, the next one is we need a Selenium Java dependency. Let's go for Selenium Java. And this is a latest one. So click on this and here the alpha versions are available for Selenium 4. Okay, so I can still use alpha version. Just I'm going to latest version of Selenium 4 alpha 3. Now get this dependency and add this dependency also. And after that, we need to also add one more dependency, uh, web driver manager. So because we no need to specify the location, driver locations in your script, by default, this particular uh, dependency will download required driver. So here, web driver manager dependency, I'm going to download. So this is the one, so web driver manager. And I'm just downloading the latest one. Get this dependency then add it here. And one final one is uh, LU test engine. So this is the main one. So again, again, go to Maven dependency. I'll say LU, uh, LU test engine. Search for LU test engine. Now I can see LU test engine integration. So I can just go with this. And here 2.13, uh, right? So 2.13 is there. So let's go and uh, download this one. Click on this. Now I'm adding this into my form.xml. Done. So now I have added all four dependencies which are required. So testng, Selenium Java, WebDriver Manager, and then LDO testng. So once we have done this, uh, save this form.xml and also once again, update your project. Okay, so now I have all the dependencies ready. Now close this and update your project. So go to right click on your project, May 1, update project. So once I have updated, so you will get all the dependencies under Maven dependency section. Okay, done. So now my Maven project is ready. So the next step is, uh, so to generate LUR uh, reports, we need to download LUR binaries. So this is out of Eclipse. Okay, so to down, we need to have the Maven and LUR binaries to be installed on your operating system. Okay, because Allure internally uh, will run a server, Tomcat server, and on top of it, it will run your reports. So we need these two binaries have to download and we need to set path both of them. So Maven and Allure binaries on Windows operating system. Now let me download Maven and Allure binaries and then we'll set the path. So first of all, we need to go to a website again. So here I'm searching for another tab. I'm opening download. May one. 
so this is maven for operating system okay not within eclipse so now just go to maven download apache maven and here uh, if you just go to this site here you can see download options are available and if you're working on windows operating system you have to download binary uh, zip file so once you click on this it will download your maven zip file so i already downloaded so i'm just discarding it cancel it so once you go, uh, download this zip file so extract that zip file and once you extract it keep that file in somewhere in c drive or wherever you want so this is a file i have extra, uh, downloaded earlier apache maven 3.6.1 so I have extracted or unpacked and put that folder in my C drive. So once you have the copied this and just go to bin folder and copy this path and set your path in environment variables. So this is a small configuration we need to do. So once you download the zip file, extract that zip file and you will get a folder and put that folder in C drive or somewhere else and then go inside and go to bin folder and copy this path. Once you copy this path and we need to set environment variable for this particular maven so that we can run this maven from anywhere in your command prompt so now right click on the pc go to properties now advanced system settings and here go to environment variables inside this you can see something called path variable and click on edit now here you have to add this particular path so now i just say new and paste over here so I hope I already have this path earlier here. So I'm just removing this. Okay, so if you already have no need, you have to add this path. And after that, just close all the windows like this. And after that, so once we have done this Maven, and we can also cross check whether Maven is properly configured or not, you just open the command prompt and Windows command prompt and here type MVN iPhone version. MVN iPhone version. So this will give you the maven version you have installed or you have configured so once it is done now we need to same way we need to also download ilo binaries and we have to set path and we can verify the version now i'll show you how to download this ilo binaries for windows now again go to a uh, web page and here just i'm typing ilo's download ilo download on windows on windows okay so just go here and there is a documentation guys there is very good documentation is available from there also we can get it let me just go to documentation part so your reports so i'm just going through documentation so here this is a official website for your uh, document your uh, website and here you can see documentation page so in this documentation they have given detailed information so we have to configure this on windows operating system so you can see here uh, getting started so you can see here installation command line is there right so you can just click on this and here they have provided some instructions to how to uh, download and configure this allure on your operating system so linux we have to run these commands if it is a mac we have to run this command if you have windows you can run this command but uh, we need to install this scoop also before that if you start uh, if you want to install through command line but uh, if you don't if you want to install manual process you can just go through this process so they have the, given some link so we can get this uh, binary from maven central and we have to download extract the zip file and then set paths now let me do this process so click on the maven central i'll provide all the links in the description later you can guys uh, can get it from there so here there are multiple versions are there i'm just clicking on latest one 2.13.0 this is the latest version of allo reports now clicking on this and you can see a lot of things here so it depends on operating system you have to download proper one so here this is a zip file uh, i am going to download so click on this now it is downloading one zip file so once you have this zip file you have to again extract this zip file so you will get one folder so if i just go to and show folder in download this is a zip file so once you extract it uh, into some folder you can see one more folder like this so now i copy this particular folder uh, again in my C drive. So I already copied earlier. So in the C drive, you can see this folder LU 2.13.0. So if you go inside this folder, you can see bin folder, config, lib, and plugins. So again, we need to go to till bin folder and copy this one. And then we need to set path. So you can find LU.bat and LU, two files you can find. So this particular path we need to set in environment variables. Now again, right click on this PC, go to properties advanced system settings now here again go to environment variables and here under system variables select path variable 
edit. Now here we have to add that particular part. So click on the new and add. So I already added earlier, so I'm just removing this. Okay, so I already have this part. After adding this, click on okay, then okay, and then okay, and then close window. So this is how we need to set and configure the allure. Now we can verify uh, in the command prompt which we, uh, do we have properly configured or not. Just after configuration is done, open the command prompt one more time. So just like Maven version we verified, uh, similarly we can also verify the allure reports. So to do this, we have a command called allure iPhone iPhone version. So I'll say allure iPhone version. Okay, so iPhone iPhone version, I have to use iPhone iPhone version. So now it gives you the version like this. Okay, so with this, we have successfully uh, configured Maven as well as uh, LEO report on Windows operating systems. So now again, go back to our uh, project, Eclipse project there, I'll write a testing the test case, and then I'll try to generate uh, LEO reports. Now go to Eclipse. So here, this is a project we have just created and also we have updated form.xml, right? Now, let me just create a, a new package inside my SRC test slash Java. And I will name it as uh, something called uh, LU reports. Okay. This is my simple package name. So inside this, I'm going to create a test ng test case. Now let's create a new class. And here I will name it as something called uh, test one or let's say test. So click on the finish. Now I'm going to create a test ng test cases inside this. So for that, what I will do is I'll need a web driver. So test ng Cilium combination, I'll create a new test case. So let's say web driver, driver, and then import this web driver from org openq.selenium. So after that, so after that, so what I'm going to do is, uh, let me just write some of the test cases. So here I'll do the setup method. Let's so first void, uh, let's say public void. Okay, write a public void setup, public void setup. And this is the first method I'm going to create. I will execute this before class so that in this method, I'll put all the configuration. So this are before class annotation I'm going to use from test engine. So import this uh, from, and it will ask you adding test engine library. So we haven't done this earlier. So we need to add this also. We can add it from directly here or right click on the project, go to properties and Java build path here also you can add. So we can say add a library, test engine, finish. Okay, then apply and close. So now before class, we have to import from test ng done. So this method I'll implement later for or, or to launching the browser and uh, all the stuff. So similarly, I'll also create one more method. Let's say public void, uh, public void, and I'll check a logo presence of some application. So logo presence of some application I'm verifying. Okay, so logo presence. So here I'll just say uh, at the rate test annotation so that I can execute this as part of test ng test. So I will also implement this later and I can also provide some priority to this. I'll say priority equal to one. Similarly, I will also create few more tests in the same test case. So here I'll say logo presence is done. So this is another test. And here I'll perform a login test. I'll say login test. And also I will do some other test case. Let's say test case three and here I'll say uh, registration test. It's a registration test. So I am going to use uh, one application, guys, here to automate these test cases. I'm going to use a uh, NOP Commerce application. This is an open source application. Everyone can access it. So here uh, I'm going to verify the logo presence or not, and also I'm going to verify the login test with valid credentials. Then I'm also going to check this register. Okay, so three functionalities I'm going to verify. So for them, I'll have written three different tests and also I will write one more test called tear down. I'll say this is also, I'll say public void, public void, uh, tear down, public void, tear down. And in this, I'll execute this after class. I'll execute this after class annotation. I'll say after class annotation from test ng, we have to import this. So now I have just created very high level uh, all the tests. Now I need to implement this. So here as part of setup method, uh, I'm going to write something like this. So here web driver manager I'm using because I don't need to specify the locations of your browser specific driver. So which we need to import from 
iogithub.bonnygracia.wdm. Now I'm specifying Chrome browser for now, so it will launch my Chrome browser. Then I'm putting some implicit weight, and this statement is representing implicit weight. And then I'm launching the browser, then maximize the browser. So this is a basically uh, created inside the setup method. So once it is done, so I'm verifying the logo presence, logo present or not, I'm going to verify. So to do this uh, in this particular application, I'm just capture the XPath for this. I'm also going to use uh, crow path. So inspect this element and uh, inspect the logo and capture the export of the logo image. So here I'll say driver dot find element by dot xpath specify that xpath and say this is just a web element, right? So I can capture this in some variable and accounts verify status also. I can say continue dot is display. Just I want to verify the uh, display or not, right? Logo present or not. So it will return a Boolean value. So I'm just storing this Boolean status. So this is basically display status. I'm saying display status. And then I'm writing some assertion to validation. So that will verify uh, the Boolean status or the true or false. Assert dot asset equal. So display status. And it will return either true or false. I'm verifying this. So as that we have to import from org.testing. So this is the first test I have written inside the class. So this will verify, sorry, not this one guys. It should be part of logo, right? So this is one. So this is a logo presence. And then I'll implement a login test. So here I already created uh, some piece of code. Let me just get it for login test. So here, uh, as soon as I'm launching my page, so here I'm just going to click on the login link. And after clicking on the login link, so here I need to provide email address password, then click on the login. So same thing I have done. So I click on the login link because in the first setup method itself is a page is launched and here we verify the logo. And here I'm verifying clicking on the link and providing the email ID and valid password. And then I'm capturing the, uh, and this is a basically a link. So here login link. And uh, once you click on this link and then after successful login, I'm verifying the page title. So this is the title should be there if the login is successful. If not, the title will be different. So this is the session I have, in, uh, I have inserted in the login test. So this is my another test. So here a setup method and logo presence will pass anyway. So intentionally I'll fail this particular test later uh, because uh, I want to show you multiple statuses in the report. So one test will pass, one test will fail or one test will skip so multiple statuses i'm going to show so for now i'm just giving some invalid the title here so that uh, it will go and uh, fail your test right so let, let me put like this or else i can just give some uh, different username and password invalid username and password then also you can uh, make your test case fail so for now i'm just giving some invalid title so that my test will fail now registration test i'm going to skip it so how we can skip it, I can just uh, throw some skipping exception. So thus it will automatically skip without writing any test. So skip exception, let me import from org.stng. Done. So now I have implemented all the tests. Now the last one tear down, I'll say driver.quit. So this will quit from all the drivers. Open browsers will be closed. Right, so this is my uh, test ng test case. So the first test is a uh, setup method before class I will execute and here I'm creating the driver and launching the browser and the second method is logo presence It will check the logo present or not. The next one is a login test and the next one is a registration test Finally, I'm teared on. Okay, so this is my test ng test case Now let us check uh, with the, the Particular file is properly executing or not. So let me write. Let me run as test ng test so once it is successful, then we'll move further. So we'll see how we can generate the LU reports later. So once it is successful, we can do that. All right, so now it is launched on my web page and verifying the logo. And also it will verify the login. Yes, now you can see uh, my logo present test is passed and login test is failed and registration test is skipped. Now we got the three statuses, right? So once we have successfully run it, then I'll create one test ng file. You can also run the test cases through test ng, right? Now let's go to your project and create one test ng XML file. So you can also write directly create uh, from here itself. So right click on your test case, go to test ng, 
and I can say convert to test ng. So this will create a new test ng file inside your project. So this is your test ng file and click on the finish. Now I got the test ng file. So this is your test ng file or if you, you can also write your own test ng file suit and test and uh, class. We don't need these many threads for now. I can just have only two. If you have multiple test cases, you want to execute, you can increase the thread count or else not required. So class name equal to lu reports dot test. Okay, so this is a test ng XML file. Now I am running through this XML file this time. So right click, run as test ng suit. Okay, so now it will go and uh, launching my browser. Now it will perform a logo test and then login test and then it will skip the third test. Yeah, now it is executed through XML file so successfully. And then after that, you can just refresh your project guys, okay? Just refresh. So once you refresh your project, you can see a new folder, right? So here, LU results. So when you expand, this will automatically generate it, okay? Because we have already added some dependency in the format XML, right? So that will take care. So this is newly generated one folder called Allure iPhone results. So here you can see a lot of JSON files, okay? So here, uh, these are not HTML files, guys. Okay, we should able to see the report in the HTML format. But by default, it is generated all the different JSON files. Okay. Now, what we have to do is to see the uh, to see the LU reports which are generated for this particular test case through test engine XML. So we have to run a specific command. So that's the last step. So once you run your test case, then you have to run this command called LU serve. So this is a command we have to run where we have to specify the result folder where exactly your results are generated. Now, what I will do is you can just uh, go to this folder directly. You can run the command or get the path of this particular folder. So let me just capture the path of the folder. LU reports, go to properties and here, this is the location, right? So now let's open the command prompt, CMD. And here you need to run one command that is LU serve. So here I'll say LU, this is a command again, LU serve and copy the path. So this is a command, LU serve, the complete path you have to specify wherever you have generated LU results guys, okay? Not LU reports, LU results. So this one, not this one, okay? LU results path I need to get. Because here we can say have a JSON files, right? So right click properties, this is a location. Right, so this is a location. So this is a location we have to specify. So once you run this command, it will run the Tomcat server. So it is giving an error. So it is not an error. Basically, uh, we have to run this command once you go to this particular folder. Okay, let me just uh, run this properly. So C colon admin LU reporting LU results, right? So we got the results, LU results. We have run properly, but it is not giving properly. So what is saying could not pass our expected command got serve. Oh, all right. So the command is not correct, guys. Let me just correct the command. So the command is A-L-L-U-R-E-S-E-R-V-E. -E. So serve, S-E-R-V-E -E is also there, guys, okay? So this is the command. So once you run this, it is generating the report in temp directory. So now automatically it will launch the report using this URL also. Now we can see, this is a, your LU report, the first and very basic LU report. You can see here, uh, three tests we have run inside the test class, right? And if you see here, this is a suit, if I just click on the show all, suit in the suit, we have a test inside this LU report test. These are three tests we have run. So go to login test and it is failure basically. So expected at this one, but no found this one. And logo present is also passed. It is saying passed. And registration testing got uh, skipped. Okay. And categories also we can see here. And this only login test is got failure. So here we can filter it actually. State based on the status, we can filter it. Now source, if I have multiple source and multiple cases, you can find it here. And you can also see the beautiful graphs here. So CVRT and status, duration, all these things. But we haven't configured a lot of things, guys, so far. We, have, we will do that in the next video. So how to create a source and we how to create a test, how to create a, 
uh, tasks, all those things will be still there. So a lot of things we need to still configure in this report. Uh, I'm going to show you in the next video. So this is very basic LU report. So it will give you the detailed information about all your tests. So this environment features by stories, categories. So these things we have to still configure. So we need to just customize this particular report to a project, uh, some other information. Okay. So these are the steps we need to follow to generate the report. So step one, we have to create a new Maven project and update all the dependencies in the formed XML. Then download and configure Maven and Allure binaries in Windows environment. And then you can verify the version through command line interface. Then create one test engine test case and run through test engine XML. And by default, it will create a new folder called LU results. So as soon as you get the LU results, then just capture the location of LU results and then run this command LU serve. So this will automatically generate your LU reports and open them in your browser. So then it will show you the dashboard categories and source graphs and everything. Right. So this is a way we can generate a basic LU reports. In the next video, I will show you a few more things, how to customize this LU report, like how we can add a description, how we can add stories, epics, and how we can we add a, a screenshots to the report. So these things I'll show you in the next video. All right. So thanks guys. So thanks for watching.